By the end of this video, you're going to understand the difference between Flutterflow and Glide and know which no-code tool you want to use for your next project. Glide and Flutterflow are both powerful no-code tools that allow you to build mobile apps and web apps without writing any code. Price is a big consideration, which we'll get to later, but one of the big differences between Glide and Flutterflow is how they handle data integration and design flexibility. Flutterflow is a lot more capable in terms of what you can build and customize compared to Glide, but as a result, it has a much higher learning curve than building with Glide. So right off the bat, if you're looking for the easiest platform to use if you're a complete beginner and you just want to get started and build something that works, you're going to want to use Glide. Flutterflow has a much higher learning curve. It's still definitely possible to learn, and we have a link in our description to learn both Flutterflow and Glide, but Flutterflow is a little bit more complicated, and it's more complicated for two main reasons. One, you are going to integrate your own database through a platform like Firebase or Supabase, and it's not that complicated to do it, but it does make it a little more complex compared to Glide, which has the database integrated completely into the platform. Uh, so you don't have to worry about working with any other systems. Uh, the other thing, as you can even see here in the demonstration, is you have full design customization here in Flutterflow. Uh, while Glide has components that you're going to build into the uh, platform and into the app, but you don't have full customization over these components. Uh, so you can add graphs, as you can see here, and charts, and, and all sorts of things like that. And it makes it really easy to build an app that looks really good without having a design sensibility. But with Flutterflow, uh, you have to know how to design in order to make your app look good. Uh, so there's pros and cons to both being easier to use and, and uh, more complex and, and having more advanced functionality. Uh, but just off the bat, if you're looking for the easiest to use platform, you're going to want to go with Glide. Next, I'm going to talk a little bit more about design and customization. So, so I talked about this a little bit already, but if you're looking to build a fully custom app where you're controlling every pixel on the page, you are going to want to go with Flutterflow. Uh, with Glide, as I mentioned before, you're, you're limited to the components that Glide has uh, for you to use, which do give you a good amount of customization but it's not going to give you the same level of customization that Flutterflow does. Um, if you need to build really advanced workflows, uh, work with external APIs, uh, build uh, really custom uh, user interactions, all of those things, you're going to want to go with Flutterflow. Um, and the reason for this, which I'm going to get into in the next section, is uh, the use cases for each are a little bit different. So whether you're going to want to use Flutterflow or Glide, is going to be strongly influenced by the use case of the app that you're building. So Glide is meant for internal apps, so apps that you're going to use inside of your business. Uh, that's the main use case why you would want to use Glide. So you're building tools that uh, you, know, you can use for your own business, uh, automate processes, uh, build knowledge bases, build inventory management systems, those types of apps. Now, you can use it to build uh, the first version to test ideas out of consumer apps, but it's not going to scale in the same way that Flutterflow does. Now, if you want to build uh, an external uh, app that uh, consumers are using outside of your business, that's when you're going to want to look at Flutterflow. You also could look to other app builders such as Bubble, and you can check uh, the link in the description to go to our uh, Flutterflow versus Bubble video, which is going to give you a comparison of those two tools if you're considering building a consumer app. Uh, but for Flutterflow, you're going to uh, want to use that if you're building a consumer app, if you're considering Flutterflow versus Glide. So uh, the use case uh, really is going to influence uh, which platform you're going to want to use. Now let's talk briefly about the pricing and what you're going to pay for each of these platforms. So for Glide, they have two different types of pricing. First, they have for companies, which is going to start at $99 per month billed yearly. They also have a maker plan, which is meant for that use case of building your first idea, testing it out. And for this, uh, they have both a free version 
and a version of $49 a month billed yearly. So it depends on which use case you are in uh, Glide. Now for Flutterflow, they had a free version so you can start building for free and learning the platform. And then it goes from $30 to $78 a month. Uh, so Flutterflow is actually a little bit less expensive. Uh, just keep in mind, you're also going to have to pay for your database integration. So something like Supabase or uh, Firebase in order to integrate that into Flutterflow. So in terms finally, I'm going to talk a little bit about capabilities. Now with Flutterflow, you can publish your app to the App Store or the Google Play Store and have it be an app that's actually installed on users' phones. Now with Glide, you can build mobile apps, but they're going to be progressive web apps, meaning that they're not going to be fully installed on the user's phone. Uh, they can install it uh, to their homepage on an iPhone or Android phone, for example, and it acts essentially as an installed app, but you're not able to actually download it from the App Store. And there are certain functionalities that you can't build into it, such as in-app payments the way that you can with Flutterflow. So if you need your app to be in the App Store or Google Play Store, then you would want to go with Flutterflow. Hopefully you have a better understanding now of the differences and similarities between Flutterflow and Glide. If you want to learn more about building with Flutterflow and Glide, check the link in the description to go to No Code MBA's full courses on both of these platforms. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel to get all of our future content here for free. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. I'll see you in the next video.